Hello everyone and thank you for taking the time to join us on this glorious afternoon here in Cheshire for the launch of Bentley's new Bentayga. I'll see you in the garden. And let it go, here I go Are you ready? Welcome to this beautiful garden just down the road from the home of Bentley in Crewe. Now, once we have revealed the new Bentayga, we will be having a live Q&A session. So please feel free to submit your questions as we go along. I am joined now by the Chairman and Chief Executive of Bentley, Adrian Hallmark. Adrian, hello, lovely to see you and at a socially appropriate distance. Hi Vicky, pleasure to be here and of course, we're very fortunate that Bentayga is 1.998 metres wide, so we've used it to actually measure this distance out. Perfect. <laughs> now, the, the Bentley is the first one to be launched as part of the new Beyond 100 strategy. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yep. So last year was our centenary, and of course, as we came to that date, we reflected deeply on what made the brand successful in the past and what made make it successful in the future. I think it's fair to say the next 10 to 20 years will see radical change for the industry and for Bentley itself. That comes in the form of new customer types, new markets that are opening, but also electrification of the products and decarbonisation of our business. So we're already on the journey. The, the factory is carbon neutral. Uh, we've started by electrifying Bentayga with the hybrid and we have a, a strong plan to bring our first full battery electric vehicle to market within the next five, six years maximum. So we're on track. And that strategy is all the more important in the wake of COVID-19. How has Bentley responded to the challenges that that's thrown up? Well, I think the first response is we've not changed the strategy. Uh, the, the mission to become the most sustainable uh, and successful luxury brand in the world remains the same. This has certainly slowed down certain things. It, 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 there's no, no question about that. Uh, we've closed the factory down for seven weeks, uh, first time in the history of the company. Um, we've then uh, got back to work, but at partial production rates. So the financial impact it makes short term is significant. But as I say, it won't put us off the long term direction for the company. And keeping our colleagues safe was number one priority. And protecting the future investment was number two. And we've achieved both. So the factory, which is just a few miles over there, is up and running. Mm -hmm. What are the next steps? Uh, well, to get us to this stage already has been incredible because we've had most of the workforce working from home all the way through the crisis. So the next steps are to launch, first of all, the new Bentayga uh, that we're here to celebrate today, and then systematically to roll out the derivatives, the hybrid, the different powertrains in that model, but also there'll be lots of innovation in the rest of the range and Mulliner products in the future. And then, of course, I've mentioned electrification, but also this movement of the brand into new customer groups, new markets and growing the business over the next five years when we've got through the immediate crisis. That's the focus that we have now as a team. Lovely. Thank you very much for now. OK, let us turn our attention now to Bentley's sector defining SUV, the Bentayga.
I am now joined by the person responsible for the Bentayga, the product line director, Chris Cole. Chris, we Hello. saw there an impressive resume of the Bentayga's journey so far. I particularly like the jumping shot. Yep. Um, what do you credit for its success? Uh, its dominant success, I think, without any doubt, is that it was the first ever luxury SUV. And in that position, it's created that sector and even with some competitors coming into that sector, we've maintained a pinnacle position and pretty much dominated amongst all of those competitors, which is amazing. And since the launch, we've now sold 20,000 Bentaygas, which is in itself a historic achievement for Bentley. No car in the four year period has achieved that. And even as recently as 2019, just last year, we saw an 18% increase in sales from the previous year, which is outstanding. Now Whenever I've driven the car, I'm always impressed by its ability just to melt the miles. It is an engineering tour de force. What characteristics do you think make it so appealing? It, it certainly is a tour de force. The, the brief for the car was exceptionally broad. It had something that no other car had as a requirement in order to make it perform like a supercar, be as luxurious as any limousine, have formidable off-road capability, and also have the first step into autonomous driving. And then you throw in a seven seat package, you throw in hybrid, as Adrian mentioned earlier, and you can see that it was an exceptionally broad brief and it's achieved all of that in spades, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so for us, we found that that has really set the car amongst any other com uh, competition right at the forefront of its capabilities. Now, looking at the SUV market as a whole, how do you think it has changed since 2015? It's grown significantly. I mean, we created it, the luxury SUV at least, um, and as the, some impressive competitors have joined that field now, it's grown threefold since we launched the car. But even with those competitors and the growth that we've continued to see in our own sales means that we still dominate that sector. And how will the new Bentayga make the most of that growth? Well, how do you make something that's brilliant even better? Um, well, that was a challenge in itself, really. Um, we couldn't stay neutral. We had to look forward and look to improve. So we thought long and hard about what to do with the new Bentayga, listened to the customers, what they had to say about the car, thought about the strategy of the company, the electrification journey beyond 100. And with that, there were three main areas that we really wanted to enhance the external design of the car to bring it up to date with the rest of the family, and Stefan will talk us through that in a moment. The actual interior comfort for the passengers to make it as big and as roomy and as luxurious as possible. And then finally, a, a real boost in technology in the car to bring it completely up to date and beyond the next two, three, four years. So it's got those class leading uh, capabilities in terms of the tech on the car. Lovely, thank you very much. Well, I think it is now time that we saw the car. So, Adrian, if you could do the honours. With pleasure. So, it's my privilege to allow all of you to enjoy the beauty of the new Bentayga. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Bentayga. Well, here it is, resplendent in rose gold and alpine green. And to talk us through in more detail is the Director of Design, Stefan Silaf. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Vicky. Great to see you. Lovely to see you too. Now, there's another dazzling design from you, and yet you've managed to maintain such a presence. How have you done this? Yeah, I had the privilege with the great Bentley design team uh, to work mainly on the front and also on the rear of the 
Bentayga 2 and yeah, do some significant, significant change but also improvement. So looking at the front, how does that differ from the first generation Bentayga? So we literally changed more or less everything from the A-pillar forward and starting maybe with the bigger picture, the proportion, we had the chance to uh, widen the stance of the car for 10 millimeter on each side. Talking a little bit about measurement, we also had the chance to lift the bonnet for 30 millimeter to give a more upright and prominent statement of our face, let's say. And those headlamps are pretty mesmerizing as well. Yeah, I mean, we had the chance with all the changes in getting the front more upright, also to change the fenders, and we integrated elliptical lights and also look at the details, this crystal cut glass theme we have been establishing also in the Continental GT and the Flying Spur, gives a certain kind of family feeling to the Bentayga 2 and the rest of our portfolio. Now I notice as well that you've brought that through to the rear and this is a new back end so if you can talk us through this that would be lovely. Yeah I mean the rear end is really really doing a, a big step also with regard to the stands again the wheels came out also in the rear for 10 millimeter but we also had the chance to change the trunk lid into a kind of wraparound theme and really emphasize the width and the yeah the statement altogether of the rear end of the car uh, with doing a really, really wide layout of the architecture, also the horseshoe, and then integrating these elliptical lights with very typical Bentley, also lovely details. It does look a lot wider, is it? Or is it just magic from you? It is not wider. It is, I wouldn't say magic, but it is a part of our, let's say, professional business to make things look really more and more advanced and this was one of our little tricks we were playing let's say. Now in profile it also looks a bit longer so is that another special Stefan trick? Uh, again yeah I mean the overall length and also the wheelbase hasn't changed. Uh, I suppose the, the effect uh, arrives from the fact that the bonnet is longer and then to counterbalance the, the, the kind of prominent front end we had the chance also to work on the rear spoiler also for aerodynamic reasons, but it also is stretching the overall length of the car visually. Well, visually, it already looks fast, and I'm sure it will be. What about inside the car? What about the Again, major changes? A, an exercise we really, really enjoyed. It's always is and has been a lovely interior. And we have now the chance to change the big things. We had the chance to work on the seats, on the door trim, on the dashboard, and on the center console. It does look like another exquisite work of art. What about the materials? Can you talk us through a few more details? Yeah, before I go to the materials, there have been two major changes in the dashboard. Uh, so the whole, let's say, dashboard became more digital. So we integrated a digital uh, combi instrument and also a 10.3 inch uh, digital display in the center console. And Chris is going to talk a little bit more in detail about all the technical uh, effects of, of, of these devices. Yeah, and coming back to your question on the, on the, on the materials, uh, i give you a few examples. One of the things I really love is this um, decoration part over here in the door trim, in the dashboard. Uh, it's um, diamond polished 3D aluminium. And we're talking a little bit also about sustainability in this case. We have two more new veneers, sustainable veneers uh, introduced as well. Uh, the Koa and, and the Crown Cut, Crown Cut Walnut. Um, on focusing on details in the door trim, in the seats, we have um, the kilting. And it is in the seats also accompanied with a new micro piping so it gives a very very modern statement and yeah altogether I would say the combination of the materials of the colors a big step forward into fresh and modern statement. Lovely thank you so much indeed for that first look Stefan. My pleasure. Vicky. Thank you. So we have had a look at the surfaces now and let us ask Chris to dig a little bit deeper and go beneath Chris, can you talk us through the cabin, please, from yes. your point of view? Uh, of course, yes. So we'll start with the back of the rear part of the car because, as I said, one of the key objectives was to improve on the comfort of the passengers and really look to get that 
enhance what we had as a really high level of comfort, take it one step further. So with some in innovative work with seats, new seating arrangements, uh, we've increased the, uh, the, the leg room for the passengers, in particular on the four seat variant, with different uh, positioning of the occupant, we've got up to 100 millimetres additional knee room, which is really good and really helps set off that sort of limousine experience in the back of the car. And with the five seat, we've introduced cooling in the seats as well as heating in the seats. There's also, for the rear occupants, uh, an enhancement in the touchscreen remote with a five inch screen now with more functionality that allows the people in the rear of the car to have much more control over the climate, over the, 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 the music that's playing and some of the important information about what the car's doing, uh, which is great for just entertainment generally in the back of the car. So the rear cabin has more comfort and even more control, particularly for children who, yes. will, who will love that. Yes. And for the customers who want to drive rather than be driven, what can they expect up front? Well, it's a formidable driving machine, as we know, anyway. Um, so what we wanted to do was really give it an extra boost in terms of the technology so that for the, this new Bentayga, we had a step forward in terms of the actual um, infotainment. It's all of the uh, digital and electronic equipment in the car. As Stefan said, a new touch screen in the, in the centre part of the fascia with the very latest infotainment system, much more intuitive to use with many, many more features compared to the, uh, the first Bentayga and a digital combi display. But also importantly for the real driving experience, a head up display has been enhanced with more information for the driver, um, uh, real-time traffic information, for example, and uh, road condition data on the head-up display, which just makes it all, enhances that whole driving experience. So when it comes to connectivity, how much of a connected car is it? So every new Bentayga comes with an embedded SIM. That means that we can connect the car instantly to my Bentley services and with the launch of the new Bentayga brings a new set of services for connected car. Uh, we expect to see about tenfold increase in the use of such connected services which is a real step of technology boost um, and what the customers really demand from us. Um, and with that, that means that all of the additional information to a download of NAV updates, for example, points of interest, um, and importantly, additional speech recognition as well for the driver, uh, extra functionality through speech, which makes the whole driving experience more safe as well. Yeah, absolutely, and that's all becoming so much more important every yeah. day. And what about technology across the rest of the car? So, again, um, something that was already brilliant, we wanted to make even better, uh, which was as, as a, uh, you know, in interesting, as, as I said earlier. Um, so we launched the car with the 4-litre V8 uh, 550 PS engine, which is extremely efficient um, so we, and is our biggest selling uh, engine in Bentayga. Um, so we're really pleased to do that. Also, the uh, innovative 48-volt body control system is, has, is on the vehicle and has been enhanced with, for example, as Stefan said, the di difference in the track of the vehicle, that extra 20 millimetres, makes all the difference to just improve what was already great, just one step forward in terms of steering feel and lateral control of the car. Um, and you mentioned earlier the headlamps, for example. Each one, 48 LEDs in each headlamp with um, adjustable modes which are automatic for different driving conditions, which really help with the night driving experience, but equally doesn't dazzle the oncoming traffic, which is really important. Now, you mentioned that at launch we will have the V8. So when can we expect the hybrid, which will be part of the Beyond 100 strategy that Adrian spoke about earlier? Yeah, the, the hybrid will be available through the rest of this year. So in the major markets where we see hybrid as really important, the UK, of course, Europe, uh, Japan and the USA. And then with other markets, the hybrid will be introduced in 2021. Lovely. Thank you very much. I look forward to driving them both. Yeah, yeah, great. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. You're Brilliant. So, ladies and gentlemen, coming right up, we have got the live Q&A with Adrian, Stefan and Chris.
so now it is time for me to put your questions to the team. And I will start with Adrian. I read about the Comeback Stringer campaign to restart production. How successful has it been? So the Comeback, Comeback Stringer campaign was all about preparing the works for um, the, the post-COVID environment, protecting the 4,500 people that work at Crew um, from the effects of the disease, allowing us to ramp up and run the business effectively. And it was a fantastic experience, actually. We took all the Public Health England guidelines, plus lessons from 12 factories around the group that had already restarted, and then a huge innovation process. 250 changes to the way that we operate. We have hand sanitizers everywhere, personal protective equipment before they were mandated, and we have so-called nine lines of defense. And I'll give you one example of how effective this has been. Um, when we shut down, we had two people with COVID-19 in the week that we closed down and no cross-contamination. Since we've come back, we've put in place a testing program so we can do 600 tests per week, 600. And we're using all of that capacity. We've so far found four people that had no symptoms in the last few weeks with COVID-19. And none of them have been in contact with anybody. They've, all the social distancing has worked and we've now isolated them. So we have our own track and trace system too. So we never wanted to do any of this, but it's been a, a fantastic example of innovation in a crisis and being able to manage effectively. And uh, we're very proud of the work the management team have done, but also the way the whole workforce have pulled together uh, to support each other in this crisis time. It's been really good. You need to run for government. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Um, to Chris now, when does the new Bentayga go on sale? Next week. <laughs> as simple as So in the UK and Europe uh, from the beginning of July. Um, so actually that means that we'll start to see the cars move into the dealer network from tomorrow and first customers in cars soon after that, which is just fantastic. Um, the rest of the rollouts globally uh, will then follow through the, the coming weeks for the V8 and the hybrid, as I said earlier, will be um, a, a bit later in the year in the UK, Europe, Japan and, um, and USA and then the rest of the world in 21. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Next one is to Adrian again. Adrian, given the success of Bentayga, over 20,000 made already, would you like one or two more SUVs in the lineup as part of the Beyond 100 strategy and who pruned the roses? <laughs> Um, I don't know who pruned the roses last, actually. I don't think they've been pruned for about 127 days, a bit like my hair. Um, oh, yeah. But I think in terms of Bentayga, the first thing I would say is we have achieved incredible results with a single model and with a very limited engine range at the beginning. Uh, what we've now got is hybrid V8 12-cylinder and a, a, a really fantastically um, upgraded car, that, as you say, Chris brings this design exactly in line with the language of the rest of the range. So from my point of view, more derivatives, uh, more specials within that package and that framework are the first objective. Of course, we've got lots of ideas about subsequent cars, but any good automotive guy has to say, you'd have to wait for the next launch for those. <laughs> we're here today to talk about that particular car and we're very proud of it and we're, we're very happy with the success that we've had but I think we just build on a very strong winning formula. So let's just see what happens in the next two years. Fine, will do. Um, and just a comment to Stefan, what a beauty. I'm not sure whether they're talking about the car or you, but I'd take, take both if I were you. <laughs> um, to Chris, this one is from you. How well was the hybrid model received and in what markets was it most successful? Um, so it's been really well received. Um, I personally love that car. Um, the serenity when you're driving that car is just astonishing um, and yet the power delivery is so progressive it's it's just a beautiful beautiful car to drive um, in Europe is where we first started selling the hybrid so of course therefore it's done well throughout Europe and we're literally just seeing the first cars now in the US and we expect then the US to follow just like it has in Europe um, and then China will be with the new car next year Lovely. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. And a, a full question to you this time, Stefan. How would you spec your Bentayga? I have to say I spec one of the two, and it is uh, obviously 
the, the green one uh, and I also love the interior uh, with the Cumbrian green. So it is for me a, a typical spec for a Bentley and uh, also with the 22 inch polished wheels. It is something I would immediately love to have a grand tour going to Europe and enjoy the countries and the car. <laughs> um, and Adrian, so what sort of use patterns do Bentley owners have, given that they might have many other cars? And does that in itself affect the possibility that they might switch to full electric powertrains? Mm. Um, we are unique in the segment. Um, and this may sound strange, but I'll say it the way it is. Uh, we are the everyday car for our successful and wealthy customers. Um, it seems interesting that people spend our kind of money to buy cars that they use every day, but they'll have the other exotics uh, for special occasions and for collectibles also. But the number of customers that buy Bentley because they drive them every day is the vast majority. Um, so that is really important to us. They do high mileage, uh, they use them for all occasions, uh, and it makes the brand very strong. Uh, in terms of electrification, it's a good connected question because um, we make grand tours. You know, you've talked about performance, you probably saw the speedometer on the screen, 190 miles an hour for the speed, SUV. Um, about the same as a 911, top speed. Um, but when it's in normal mode, it's like the most luxurious and tranquil environment you could be in. And it's that polarity of capability that we possess, Bentley, grand touring capability, that is what we stand for. So for me, um, electrification is fantastic. It fits perfectly with the brand. Effortless, quiet, refined performance. The problem is the battery power is, is not sufficient to give you the same distance of range that you get with a regular car. And to have a Grand Tourer that can't go touring wouldn't be a Grand Tourer, and then it wouldn't be a Bentley. So we, we say mid-twenties for our first electric vehicle because we believe then the power density of batteries will be sufficient to be able to drive the distance and the speeds and performance that you'd expect from a Bentley uh, without any worries, and that's where we're targeting. Excellent response. Thank you so much. Um, Chris, this one's for you. How many test and development mules were used for the new Bentayga and how many R&D kilometres were driven with these cars? Too many, he said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Too many. Um, so um, with, with the new Bentayga, we, we went through the, the process that we always do as part of the product development method uh, to build pre-series cars. Um, in total, there were a, 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 a number of cars built in order to get ready for full uh, durability testing and certification approval and then of course to prepare production. Um, so in terms of mules we didn't build any mules and we took the most advantage that we could of modern technology to simulate where we could the design outcomes to prevent us having to build too many properties in order to make it as efficient and high quality delivery as, as possible. Um, and actually, we're pleased to say that the, Bentayga, the new Bentayga programme has delivered almost spot on at every point of its delivery, which is in itself exceptional. Um, and even with the, the, the COVID crisis, we've been able to still continue to get the car into serious production with, without too many problems at all, which is remarkable testimony to the workforce and all the engineers and all of the team back at Crewe. And the next question is, what is the asking price and is there a W12 coming? So the asking price is, uh, around the world is roughly about 5% more than the existing Bentayga. Um, and we will be introducing the speed um, in early 21 in America in particular, where that market still is very, um, very keen to have the 12-cylinder car. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Adrian, back to you with some EV stuff. Um, please could you share a bit more tangible information about the EV plan beyond 100 as well? Five to six years away sounds like an awfully long time. Is there a danger that SUVs will become socially unacceptable before we see the EV? Um, I didn't think we'd have COVID to face this year. Um, so I can't predict everything. Um, so I'm worried about saying that SUVs won't be antisocial or disappear before we get to EVs. But what I would say is that um, if we look at the SUV market, 
beneath the price bracket where we are, um, the rate of growth is colossal. Um, we've started a segment in our price bracket. Uh, there's three competitors, four competitors now uh, entering that segment, and that's growing even quicker than the price segment below, all those smaller numbers. The fact is, the people are getting bigger. They have families. They want to do things in their vehicles. So SUVs um, are there because people want and need a certain type of car for a certain type of activity. Now actually with a, a plug-in hybrid, for example, um, I'm, I'm getting over 60 miles per gallon out of the hybrid that's parked out of there. Doing a 10 mile journey twice a day with a 30 miles range, charge it every second day and only, the engine will only fire up if it's minus 2 degrees or if I have to go on a longer journey and then it will still do 35 to 40 to the gallon. So as long as you charge it, the hybrid can turn an SUV into a regular family car in terms of consumption. So I don't think SUVs will go out of fashion because we all want them. It's our job as an industry and our job as a brand to actually make them sustainable. So hybridization is step one. Better battery performance, even in plug-in hybrids, step two, as fast as we can, so you get more electric range in proportion to engine range. And step three, when the power density is right, full battery electric. And there's, if anybody's got the technology out there that can do it tomorrow and it's validated, give us a call. If not, for all the top suppliers in the world and the research activity that's going on, it's five or six years away. Before, and that's not just for Bentley, that's for any company that does cars over a certain size, over a mid-size kind of family car. Lovely, thank you very much. Stefan, um, the new Bentayga now shares a likeness with the GT and the Flying Spur. So what are the key elements of Bentley's design language? Well, that's a, a question we need another hour. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, first of all, I think we are continuously working on our design strategy and criteria, also exchanging our opinions with uh, Adrian and the board to make sure we are really sailing in the right direction altogether. Um, and yeah, when we look at the current glimpse, you, you have to remember we are working five years in advance. So what we are doing in the studio will be in five years in the, in the market. So, but what we have been doing and what you see in the moment, I think it is still, first of all, the matrix grill in the front when we talk about the face, because this is what gives the impact. This is our product that are hitting the heart of our customer. So the, the impact is the front, the matrix grill, and then still the four round elliptical lights. This is another important issue. And then I mentioned the details before, the crystal cut theme is now uh, kind of fulfilling our portfolio with the Continental GT, the Flying Spur, and now the Bentayga too. So it is a family DNA you can feel as a customer and you feel also the brand over there. Um, then I would say on the side we have these really characteristic body lines and they are structuring the side evaluation of all our Bentleys and giving a certain kind of mixture of muscular, very, very, I would say erotic surfaces and very, very sharp and crisp lines. That also shows the ability of what we are able to do in the factory. Not every car manufacturer is able to do or to transform our wild ideas into something so satisfying and so full of quality. And then obviously coming to the, to the rear end, um, it is literally um, talking about love for details, a good structure, a good stance. Um, again, characteristic li uh, lines in the rear and then yeah, you see a lot of elliptic shapes also in the rear, uh, rear lights and also again details. So I could carry on for another 10 <laughs> minutes on the interior, but I think this is the, let's say, the main point of the question. Thank you, lovely stuff. And Chris, one for you here. What has proved to be the biggest market for Bentayga and what percentage of sales can be attributed to North America? Um, so there's three markets that kind of jolster a bit to be the biggest. Uh, so China, Europe, including the UK and North America, and they, they sort of compete. They're, they're pretty much 30% each of them. Um, so um, they dominate the, the rest of the, the, the global market, actually. Um, so, but of course, we serve all markets in the world. That's really important. It's a truly global car. 
Um, so every single market is important. Perfect. Um, to Adrian, how important is sustainability and climate change to your customers? Uh, we've asked this quite extensively within the Beyond 100 strategy um, because we find it important, but we wanted to make sure that they did. Um, clearly, although customers today are buying the cars that are out there, they're looking for what's next uh, to express themselves. So when we've done our research with not just the Bentley owners, but also buyers of cars in that price category, uh, around 40% of them are looking at EVs as their next or next but one car, 40%. This is significant. Um, they, again, they expect us to do the work, us to find the technology solutions and bring cars to market. But at the same time, they won't give up on the things they already cherish. So they want the, the fantastic interiors, the comfortable seats that weigh more than a lightweight seat. Um, because you can sit in it for eight hours and get out of it and not be, realize you've been in it for eight hours. So they're, they're used to high quality experiences. So they want an electric car that gives them all of the benefits that we offer today. So for us, um, again, as I've said, with the quietness, refinement and effortless power that you get from any Bentley, uh, electrification is the perfect evolution for us as a brand. We're really excited about it. Um, and our customers are too. Lovely, thank you. Um, Stefan, I wish I'd have sent this question in for you. Who is your tailor and what is your fashion influence? <laughs> you are one of the most stylish men in the motoring industry. I, I, to be honest, I don't have a tailor really. I mean, I, I love to go to London. For me as a, a German, I always love to go for, for London, also for the, for the fact of uh, inspiration. And fashion is definitely an inspiration because it's happening very quick, bam, bam, bam. Um, I always wanted to join British fashion and, and become more part of the British fashion, also with regard to design, because I love the fact that brands like, for example, Burberry have been reinventing themselves as a traditional brand. So this really fascinates me. But coming now really back to your, to your question, I, I love to go to uh, German Street and buy stuff from the shelf. I'm not mentioning now explicit name. I go here and there. Uh, I think it's a question of fantasy, how, how you combine things. And sometimes it's also uh, getting older, you need a more colourful statement. I mean yellow. <laughs> Only great. talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Stefan. And thank you, um, gentlemen. Really, really appreciate your answers there. Um, I have had a lovely time. I hope you have had too. Mm -hmm. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. The embargo lifts today at 5 p.m. British summer time, so not long to go now. And until then, have a wonderful evening and happy driving. Boys, shall I pour some tea? Ladies and gentlemen, while we leave Vicky, Adrian, Stefan and Chris to drink their tea, images and information for the new Bentayga are now available on bentleymedia.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and we do hope to see you in person very soon.